Okay, hopefully we're live. Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. It's <clears throat> February 8th, 2024. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope all our friends in California are a little bit drier than they were a couple days ago and hope everybody else on the East Coast is keeping warm. So the topic for today is calcium scoring. This is cardiac month and calcium scoring is something I think all of you know a little bit about. Um, Probably a lot of you have even had a calcium score yourself. If you're over 50, now some people say over 40. But calcium scoring has been around for a long time. Arthur Agassin, famous for the South, South Beach diet, actually started this way back when um, and made the point that there's a lot of markers, cholesterol, a lot of risk factors that we speak about with cardiac disease but one of the best measures of risk factor is the presence of calcium in the coronary arteries. Now, this has been argued about. No one's really said no. The question is how good is it? How carefully should you follow it? Does it change over time? What's the significance of numbers? Can you predict? What is the significance of a score of zero or a score of 3,000? So let's just do a few things. Okay, Agus and scoring. Basically, what the computer does, anything above 130 Hounsfield units, it detects, and then it creates a volume of your score. The best score you can have is zero. No detectable calcification. Now, of course, the word is detectable. It doesn't mean there's no calcification. You can have non-calcified plaque, and all of us have seen cases where you have a zero calcium score where you say, oh, the patient's great, and the patient has symptoms, you do a coronary CTA, and you have a high-grade stenosis. Certain patients, African Americans, are less likely to have high calcium scores compared to whites, and so a zero score in an African American may not be as good a marker as it might be in a Caucasian population. So again, that will vary. Of course, you would like to have a zero score, but it does make the point that a zero score is just one measure of your coronary health. And again, the fact that a zero score can be misleading. Now, you can see scores as high as three or 4,000. Um, the thing about that it may not be as bad as it sounds. You say zeros normally you got 3,000, oh my God. Uh, a lot of work being done on the distribution of calcium. If you think about it as a pipe, coronary artery as a pipe, if the pipe is totally calcified, then the blood goes through very nicely. My experience has been sometimes the scores of 100 or 200, we have plaque, but it's critical. Um, that can be worse than a higher score. Now, of course, with very high scores, people have made the point, surely scores over 1,000, that doing a coronary CTA probably is not gonna be that helpful because you're not gonna be able to say there's no disease present because there's so much artifact from the calcium as well as changes which make it impossible to be predictive with a coronary CTA. But that's a story for another time. Now, what people have also uh, been pushing, and we spoke about this years ago, and there was an article probably 20 years ago from Harvey Hecht, I think he was at Sinai in New York, where it made the point that although calcium scoring is a specific study, you do a gated acquisition, it's non-contrast, usually costs under $100. He made the point that in a sense, we're really screening patients all the time because every CT of the chest has the heart. Now in the old days with lots of motion, it was hard to detect calcium or, or it looked like a lot of artifact, but these days with fast scanners, um, you could detect calcification. And so one of the important things to do, we tell the residents, the fellows, is always mention the presence of calcification on a routine chest CT if you see it. Now you could potentially miss minimal calcification, but these days with fast scanners, you're likely to see the presence of calcification. 
You can try to quantify it, minimal, moderate, extensive, or patients can come back for a specific calcium score. But very important that we are doing screening all the time. Perry Pickard wrote an article about screening, you know, but this what we call unintentional screening, the ability to look at the liver for fatty liver, the textural change, the ability to look at the pancreas, the ability to look at muscle mass, the ability to look at calcium in the coronaries, the ability to look at calcium in the aortic valve, the ability to look for calcium or plaque in the aorta are all good examples of screening without having a specific study done, just part of a routine examination. So I think it'll be important for all of us to remember that, that if you are, always look at the coronaries. You know, we always look at the heart for nodes, we look at the aorta for size, look at the coronaries for presence of calcification, and then you can define it. That may be the first sign somebody has coronary disease. So that's an important thing to do, and it's surely easy enough. There's work going on with AI, for AI to quantify the presence of calcification, not just to say there's calcium present, and then there's minimum moderate uh, extensive, but create a scoring. And so there's a lot of work being done. So I think within a short period of time, the computer's gonna quantify that for you. So it's not gonna be perfect perhaps, but it'll give a range and that'll make it easier. Um, it's interesting that as we do it, uh, sometimes you, you get pushback or at least surprised because now the patients read their chart they read about they say they have lung cancer or some other cancer and they get a chest CT and the chest CT shows no meds but shows calcium and then we dictate calcium score uh, and we or calcium is there and that patient uh, is highly consistent with coronary artery disease and patients had no history or no knowledge of coronary artery disease and they get upset so it's something to really remember um, but again, this idea about using calcium scoring, good article by Roman makes the point, unlocking the potential of coronary calcium scoring in the prevention of coronary artery disease, that again, uh, coronary scoring serves as a robust indicator of atherosclerotic burden, th thus refining risk stratification and guiding therapeutic intervention. Despite certain limitations, Calcium scoring stands as an instrumental tool in coronary artery disease management and thwarting adverse cardiovascular events. So many articles like that really talk about the advantages of doing, uh, and there has been work done looking at some of the medications. If you take certain meds, statins, will of course um, the numbers go down or will they go up still? Uh, no one has ever really shown good numbers for that. Uh, it's not typically recommended to get follow-up scans routinely to look at the response to a statin or other medication. But um, um, the 50 age was typical, what was people recommended now, like many things including lung cancer screening, people are pushing it to a younger age, young uh, age 40. In this other article by Patel, and I pulled a few different articles, use of uh, coronary CT for predicting cardiovascular events in cancer patients, they made the point that uh, in this population, it could be helpful. In this article by Bricks, making the point very nicely about the fact that in patients who are of intermediate risk for coronary artery disease, the presence of calcification gives the cardiologist additional information into managing the patient. And so patients who might be afraid of getting statins, um, calcium scoring will be very, very helpful. There's lots of different um, recommendations. The American Heart Association um, you know, talks about groups where it may be useful, people reluctant to begin statin therapy who wanna understand their risk more, people concerned about restarting statin therapy after stopping because of side effects, men 55 to 80, a woman 60 to 80, with few risk factors 
who question whether they would benefit from statin therapy, patients 40 to 55 with an estimated 10-year risk for developing heart disease between 5 and 7.5%, and risk factors that increase their chances of heart disease. Now, a lot of internists now, as part of the workup for a patient every couple of years, will be getting calcium scoring. Now, it's interesting, the American Heart does make the point that calcium scoring isn't recommended for routine screening of patients who don't have symptoms of heart disease and have low risk unless they have a strong family history. Okay, they also comment, of course, if you've already had a heart attack, bypass surgery or stent, calcium scoring is not gonna help any, and that's somewhat obvious, but it's worth repeating. So it's an easy study to do. Again, for the techs or radiologists who do it, there is different software that allows you to quantify the amount of calcium in each vessel and then have a total score. Uh, a lot of the cardiologists like to see the individual vessels, though the reality is, in truth, management is dependent on the total score. Um, you want to be careful, particularly not to confuse aortic calcification with coronary artery calcification. You want to be careful if a patient has a stent in place. You get an incredibly high uh, number if you confuse a stent with calcium. And there's a lot of work being done, uh, again, looking at the distribution of calcification and trying to use that as a predictor of the importance of the presence of calcification, that a score of one patient 100 and another patient 100, it may be totally different in terms of significance. So a lot of work is being done in that, and there are a few different companies that are developing software. AI is gonna play a major role in this, particularly looking at distribution, quantification, and trying to extract even more information out of the data set. So that's a little bit about calcium scoring, and we're gonna to try to bring you a lot of stuff on Cardiac This Month, our new app, and a lot of new cases and content, a lot of stuff from Lily on the topic, and I hope everybody has a great day.